Hi there, Sarah of Get Weaving. Uh, this is session six, um, helping turn your lovely handwoven fabric into a garment. So, just a quick recap I'm making a woolly version of T001, which is this one. I've made the mock up, that's in the background here. I know it fits, so my pattern's all sorted out. I've worked out the size of the fabric I need to weave. Uh, I have all my yarn wound off ready to set up. So this is the yarn I'm using. It's hand spun singles left over from another project and then plied all lots of different colours together. So I've wound it into balls like this and then take it from the centre so that when I wind the warp there's no extra tension on it. I generally do this with most of my yarns so that when I'm winding the warp they all come off at the same tension. If they don't then it's going to give you problems with your weaving later. If one of the warps is too tight or too loose you're not going to get a decent shed and the whole way through you're going to have to be manipulating it. It's not a great idea. So let's show you what you need next. So I've been filling in a project sheet, which I did put for you to download. I've put in as much as I can so far. So I've weighed all the yarns before I start. I'll weigh them when I've finished. Um, I'll measure the fabric before and after washing. It's all those sorts of things are quite handy. This is a calculations sheet. I'm going to put a photo of this on as well so you can pause it and have a look. It's very handy to be able to switch between inches or centimetres or yards or metres depending on how your yarn is measured. Uh, that's when this comes in. <laughs> Very handy. I just suggest you work in imperial or metric but don't use both because you're getting a terrible muddle. So I, because I learnt such a long time ago I still work in inches generally. I do know what metres are but I've always worked on ends per inch, dents per inch. When I measure something out, it's, it's always in inches and then I recalculate it if I need to. So on here, I've got the calculations. That's how I work them out. How I know what width I've got to do, um, what length the warp needs to be, including loom waist and take up and so forth. And that way I can get the best possible piece of fabric that I need without any guesswork. Um, what I would like to do is show how my loom is threaded up. I've got it in front of me, it's clamped to the table. It's going to be more in a series of photographs with labels. Um, so I hope that's going to all work out. So this is what I'm going to be needing. I've got my balls of yarn all wound, ready to go. I have got the back stick tied to the heddle. That means that it doesn't wobble around when you're threading up. The string I'll talk about in a minute. You're going to need a shuttle, maybe more. You're going to need a threading hook. I have these little pieces already cut to use for ties. My loom is clamped to the table. I'm going to be using my warping frame for the extra length. If the weather's nice, I can do this in the garden, but it's horrible today, so I'm indoors. So the my very old dryad warping frame that I've had since I was at college is also clamped to the table. Now this piece of string, you see, says 200 inches. So I use pre-measured pieces of string. Then I know I can't possibly make a mistake. And then I take this off once the warp's wound and I know I can't have made a mistake. There's nothing worse than finding that you've, I don't know, missed a peg or something. And it keeps it nice and, you know, the tension nice. 
I've also got some sheets of paper here, but I'll have a chat about those in a minute. So you can probably also see I've marked the centre of the heddle and the width of the warp that I'm going to be threading. This is 7.5 this heddle. It's on my Ashford 20 inch knitter's loom, which I make most of my clothing on. It's flat at the moment. It's not folded. You have it flat when you're threading up. Um, the time is half past two. So I'm going to time myself starting and then finishing. It really doesn't take very long, hour and a half, I reckon. So <laughs> now I've set myself that, I'll have to do it, won't I? So I've got my nice Ashford plastic threading hook because it doesn't tear the yarns. I'm going through first slot on the side and then I'm following the path so it comes around the walking pegs following the same path and back so that's one pair I normally put the hook down as well so it doesn't catch as I'm going round the back stick through the next slot, follow the path of the string, be careful to not miss a peg out otherwise your walks won't all be the same length. So that's two pairs. Now my yarns are all very different. As I said I've applied lots of different colours together. So I think what I'm going to do is miss a few and then carry on and then fill in with the others so that I don't have one big block of one colour. So what I'm going to do is just randomly miss a slot. Same path. And you can see it's flowing nice and easily. It's not catching on anything. So a pair here. Now I must um, say I did weigh all the yarns first. So I know what I'm starting with. I've put that on my project sheet. And then when I've finished, I'll weigh them again. It's just handy. So I know how much yarn I've taken. I very rarely repeat things. But if by any chance I did, I'd know how much yarn I needed. Uh, now, miss a few more because I don't want very broad stripes of any one colour. And then when I'm weaving, I might weave with a couple of shuffles so that again, I don't have a big block of one colour. Now, if I decide to start another colour, so for example, this one to fill in, Always tie your knots at the back. If you have to join in a new ball, always have your knots at the back. Please don't have them in the middle of your warp. If you do, then as you're weaving, the knots will get caught in the heddle and they'll probably come undone. They'll make your weaving really difficult. Um, following the same path again. This is fun. I'm just doing the colours as I feel like it. It's all the same wool, so it doesn't matter about um, trying to match the tension. It's just the colours that are changing. So I'm just going to carry on with this until I'm done. And then I'll weigh what's left. Right, we're all done. 
I'm really pleased with this. So I've got some choke ties on as well and I've tied through the end loop but not around the string. The string is left behind so I don't want that wound up with the warp and this is what it looks like. So if there was a much stronger colour I tried to spread it out. Now that does mean that there's quite a few crossings over on the back. I'll talk to, that, to you about that later because I'm going to put a stick in when I get near the end of the weaving to help separate them. I've undone the heddle to stick tie. You can see it's right the way across. I have checked. I haven't missed any slots. I think that's really pretty. So if there was a really strong colour like this one, I've tried to spread it out and that one. And what I've done is weighed what's left. It came up to 255 grams. So I filled that in on my project sheet and that means I used 265 grams, which is great because I've got 255 left for the weft, which should be plenty. So I'm very pleased with that. I think that's very pretty. Now, next tip, really useful, is that when I wind onto the back roller, I have numbered sheets of paper. So starting off with number one, they get wound around the back roller for a couple of reasons. One is it's a fantastic warp separator. And two is when I've wound the whole thing, I know how many sheets it's taken. So I might have an eight sheet project or a six sheet project or something like that. And then when, <laughs> when I'm weaving and I get down to number one, I know I've finished. And then if by any chance I need to spin a bit more, <laughs> hopefully not, then I can. So these sheets get wound in as I go. What I'll do is I'll start one and I'll take a photo to show you because I haven't got enough hands otherwise. Okay, I'm winding paper onto the back roller. You can see I've taken the string off. I don't want to wind that in. So I just unhooked it and pulled it through. And I've left the warp roughly loosely around the warping frame just keeps a bit of tension on it when I'm actually doing this and I'm not holding a camera then what I will do is I will have a little bit of tension on this as I wind or if you've got a friend with you they can do that bit so not pulling it but just easing it a little bit so this is winding on with a sheet of paper they're numbered it's easier with two hands but never mind and you can see that's just easing through. I'll loosen it a little bit. Rather than just having it dangling on the floor, which can create a bit of a problem. And as you can see, I've got to shoot, this is sheet number one. You can number them as you go along, but I like my having mine already numbered so I don't forget. So that's number one. And then what I'll do is I'll tuck number two in. Uh, these I've got, they're the full width of the loom, but you don't want them to get caught in here. Um, and I just keep this set for every time I wind on. So, so far it's taken 40 minutes. Not bad. I'll wind on the rest, see how many sheets I've got, make a note on my project sheet, and then it'd be ready to thread the holes. Right, all threaded on. You can see I've got enough left to tie to the front stick now. I do ties around my front stick. I've never got on very well with leashes. I like doing bunches of about one inch, starting from the centre, working my way out to the edges, a single knot first, and then retensioning it and a double knot. I've also uh, put this knitter's loom up at an angle as you can see if you've got a rigid heddle loom you won't be doing this but it needs to be angled up now so I can thread the holes it's almost 10 sheets so there's my number 10 so I know as I'm weaving how far I've got to go as I said making sure I've got enough weft left for this piece but well, I'm pleased so far I think it looks lovely and it has taken just under an hour. That's even better.
Hard to look up to see. Okay, all threaded up and tied in a single knot on the front stick. I only do a bunch of about one inch. That way the gaps in between them are fairly small and don't take too long to close up. If you have really wide bunches, then you'll have really big gaps. It'll take much longer to get rid of the gaps when you start weaving. I start from the centre, work my way out to the edges, left, right, left, right, and edges last. And you'll find by the time you get to the edges, the middle one's gone quite soggy. So that's when you tie your second knot. So what I do is I grab the ends, just pull them slightly away from the stick, and then tie my second knot. And just bounce them, make sure they're all roughly the same. You can see they're running sort of straight down in a nice line. Don't have them so they angle in, otherwise you're asking for trouble before you've even started. There's no funny loops or anything in there, so I'll tie the second set of knots. Okay, all tied up. Again, I start from the centre, work my way out to the edges, and then bounce it. You'll find when you start weaving, you have to adjust your tension quite often, because what's happening is it's tightening up on the back roller. All those bits of paper sort of tightening up a little bit so if you can't get a decent shed just tighten up either from the back or from the front you've got these two rollers so the next thing is to weave the header i'm just going to weave three or four rows some people put cardboard in or sticks at the beginning but i want as much fabric as i can possibly have i am going to check that the shed is okay there's no cross threads yeah, that all looks fine. So I'll weave a header and then we'll be doing winding the shuttle. Okay, I'm going to wind a shuttle. I like winding them in a figure of eight. So I'm winding around the side of the shuttle. Rather than over the top. So, again, I'm taking the yarn from the centre of the ball. I'm going to wind up all that I've got left. So when you've done on one side, turn it round. Figure of eight. I've got blue tape on, so if I go out somewhere, I don't lose them. I've got lots of different shuttles. Quite a few of them have got people's names on. Sadly, people who are no longer with us, but I quite like using their shuttles. So what I've got then is a nice flat shuttle. Instead of it being really bulky, this way, it's quite flat. So it's woven on the sides. The other thing is i found that with some of the balls of yarn, I've got all of one colour left. So what I'm probably going to be doing is weaving a few rows with one shuttle, a few rows with another shuttle. And I can either cut the yarn off and, and overlap it, or I can take the spare yarn up the side. So what have I got here? Oh, yes, that one was somebody I used to know at the Guild. So I've got one of her shuttles. Um, that's another one lady I taught oh, 30 years ago that's quite nice so that's winding the shuttles and I'm going to start doing some weaving and you can see what it looks like so I've got my shuttles wound just force of habit I have the head all down from the left and up from the right doesn't really matter. Now already it's gone a little bit loose, so I'm going to tighten it up on the back. I 
I have no idea what, <laughs> what this is going to look like. I don't mind. It's all good fun. So I might weave a few rows with one treble. And then swap. I'm not over beating it because I want a very soft piece of fabric and I want a fairly balanced weave so that all the colours show through. So, a few rows of pink and then I'm going to have a few rows of this rather lurid blue. <laughs> I might even alternate them. Just so it happens it's swapped round. So this time it's down from the right and up from the left. Oh, that looks pretty. I'll take a photo in a minute. Now, obviously, I'm not going to sit here and weave until it's finished. Sorry, folks. So, I'm probably going to leave it at that for today. That has taken an hour and a half altogether from starting to wind the warp to threading and starting to weave. Lovely stuff. So uh, the warp that I needed for this piece of fabric was 188 inches. I've put 200 on. I've gone a little bit to play with. There's nothing worse than getting to the end and finding you haven't got enough fabric. Don't want to do that anymore. If you've got two shuttles going, you can lock them around each other on the edges. These edges are all going to be hidden within the garment. They're all side seams or center seams. So if this was going to be a table runner or something like that, then obviously I'd be a bit more careful about locking the edges in. Nice. Pretty. Okay. Oopsie. I can't show you what I've got so far. Right. There we go. That's quick. I think that's going to be lovely. Now you can see it's quite open at the moment. It's all hand spun. So I, I do a fairly open set for this and I've allowed for it to close in when it's washed. Um, being hand spun, there are little bits that are maybe a little bit thicker than others or softly spun or there might be a slightly thicker bit somewhere if the set was any tighter than this i think it could quite easily shred uh, which i don't want so it's quite a loose set um, and then what i'm going to do is obviously weave the rest over the next few days when I get to the back, I'm going to put a stick in to separate the warps, but I'll show you that and cut it off, stitch the ends, wash it, dry it. And then obviously the next bit is cutting it out. So I sometimes get asked what I'm wearing today. It's T009, which is a jacket. And it's available in my Etsy shop. Links at the end. Thanks very much for watching. And have a great day. Happy weaving. Next time is going to be threading a mixed warp. In other words, lots of different yarns. How to spread them out across your pedal. See you soon. Have a great day. Bye now.